Greetings from FinStudy Club. My name is Ankur Kulsresh, welcoming all viewers to the next session topic on inventory analysis, wherein we are going to talk about the inventory adjustment, including the write-up and write-down provisions. Before looking at this video, I just hope that the viewers have also looked at the preceding topics so that you know we are moving in a logical manner. Fairly an easy thing to understand what happens when the inventory is valued for the balance sheet purpose. Now here, the connect has to be with the same equation that we have talked about in the basic topic wherein the opening plus purchase should be equal to the closing plus consumption. At hand, the task is what should be the value of this closing stock. Obviously, the value depends upon whether the company is following LIFO, FIFO or weighted average. And the analysis part of that, we have also looked at that which value is higher or lower in case of inflation or deflation respectively. Now here, after putting initial value according to the cost method that you have chosen, which is right here, the question is whether this value directly goes and is entered into the balance sheet. The answer to that is no. There is a rule of conservatism both under the US GAAP and IFRS which talks about checking this value with the respective market price on that particular day and putting the lower of the two. Now, like I said, the rule is being based because of conservatism. Let's just understand what will happen if we do not do anything, if, if let's say there is no market value mark to market which needs to be done uh, you know, on the negative side. Let's see what is the problem that you know this rule tries to address. I'm assuming that the company is following FIFO method according to which the cost assumption gives you a value of 40. The market value of that is let us say 35. Now this particular inventory is there with me on 31st of December of a particular year. And this has been finally sold on 5th of January of next year. Now if I do not mark it down, there is no A is equal to L plus C that I have done on 31st of December and in case of 5th of Jan, my cash is going to go up by 35, my inventory is going to go down by 40 and there is a loss of $5 that I'm going to book on 5th of Jan. Conservatism says that any loss, if you are already aware of, now this loss may be unrealized but it was known to me on 31st of December itself. So according to the rule of conservatism, you should always prepone the losses which makes me do this right down, right on 31st of December. So this loss of 5 which in previous case got booked on 5th of Jan will now be booked on 31st of December itself. So in which case by my red font is what I'm saying that you will have to do it as per conservatism. So you have marked it down to uh, by 5. So a $40 value has become 35. Now on 5th of Jan I'm going to receive cash worth rupees 35. My inventory is anyways marked down by uh, 5 to, to, to get to the value of 35 and therefore there would not be any gain or loss. So by marking the inventory down on 31st of December itself, I've been able to prepone this loss. I've been able to prepone this loss to the previous year or, or should I say uh, to the time where it was known. So hence this benchmarking with the market value is required and bear in mind that we are not marking it to market if the market value is higher. This is a conservatism rule and I'm going to take lower of the two. What you also need to understand is that the rules of IFRS are different than rules of US GAAP. My IFRS, let's just look at it, is very very simple. It says your cost, which can follow any assumption, need to be compared with net realization value. Now net realization value is realization value minus the selling cost which basically means if I've been able to sell anything for 37 and two dollars are my selling cost the net take home for me is 35. So 35 is really the benchmark for me to compare the cost. It's like a one step procedure fairly simple IFRS generally a better method to follow. 
Let's just look at what does US GAAP has to say. And for that, let me just clean the board a bit. So as per US GAAP, my market value would mean the replacement value. Now you would recall from your level one basics that your replacement value is the value at which the asset can today be purchased in the similar condition from the market. So it is really the buyer's price. Your realization value on the other hand is the seller's price. The value at which you would be able to sell it in the market. So replacement is really the buyer's price. So I'm going to compare that initially with the market price. If market value, which is a replacement value, is found to be lower, I am still not going to put that in the balance sheet. Now, under US GAAP, there are two steps. One, step one is to compare the cost with the replacement value. If answer to the first step is replacement value is lower, if replacement value is lower than the cost, then I will have to check this replacement value within a band. And the band has NRV as the upper limit and NRV minus average profit as a lower limit. Now, this is fairly simple as, as a level one standard, so I'm not ge getting into the details of it. Let's just apply a practical formula for that, according to which, you know, we would then understand the write down provisions also. Now, here is the cost, here is the replacement value, and here is the band NRV and NRV minus profit. Okay, I'm going to put in some figures. Let's say the cost is 40, replacement value is 33. So the answer to the first question here is yes, replacement value is lower, but that doesn't mean that this value can be entered into the balance sheet. The balance sheet val value has to fall between this band. Uh, let me put hypothetical numbers. Let NRV be 35 and NRV minus profit margin be 34. Now, if you look at it, the answer to the first question is yes, replacement value is lower, but the replacement value is going below this level, the minimum range. So therefore, the balance sheet value will become equal to 34. Now, there are a lot of cases that you can make out of out, out of this case, uh, this example. Let me just change the figures a bit. Here, if let us assume that NRV was 30, and NRV minus profit margin was 27, cost or replacement value, the first question, yes, cost is higher and replacement value is lower, therefore you move to the second. The second question, you got to check this 33 to be falling between the range. If, if it falls above the range, then the maximum value that can be entered in the balance sheet is 30. Obviously, if let us assume the value here was 28, cost or replacement, whichever is lower, first question yes replacement is lower you move to the second question the second question is it falling between the range answer is yes it is falling between the range I am very happy to record it at 28 so that's how my market value write down used to happen uh, in case of US gap and IFRS let's just understand the write-up and write-down provisions in, in, in a bit more detail by way of this table says that write down provision is allowed both as per US GAAP and IFRS. The only thing is that the comparable of cost is different. Like we talked about for US GAAP, it is the replacement value and for IFRS, it is NRV. Obviously, there is no limit to which you can write it down. You can make it up to zero as well. Don't forget the logic of this write down, conservatism. Okay. The question is, can you write it up again? The question that I'm asking is, if cost is 40 and market value, be it NRV as per IFRS or replacement value as per US GAAP is let us say 42. The question is, can you write up an inventory also while marking it to market? Well, the answer to that question is no. You cannot raise the value of the inventory above its original cost. But yes, there is, there is an exception to the rule under IFRS only. Under IFRS only. My IFRS says that you can write up an inventory only if you have written it down in any of the previous year. What I'm trying to say is, if from 40 in a particular year you have marked it down by 37, that means 
there is a write down of three that you have done in future years if you were to write it up again the total potential to write it up remains to the extent of the write down that you've done so in this case you are asking for a write up of two the total potential is three so yeah you can write it up the balance sheet value will be entered as 39 let us say in the third year itself you are unable to sell this the total market value keeps on increasing in this case the balance potential that is remaining for write up is only one so you can write it up 39 plus one only up to 40 now again the logic is let's understand it from the point of view of a graph if you have let me just draw this if your original cost was at a level of 40 you would have write it down to whatever level the maximum level that you can write it up is again the level of 40 you cannot take it above your historical cost well in case of revaluation model or fair value model which we follow in long-lived asset the write-up is allowed above the cost also but here inventory it is not allowed so keep that in mind that the exception is allowed only under IFRS number one it is only the reversal that we are allowing we are not allowing any write-up above the original cost it is only the reversal is allowed that means you can write it up only when you have written it down in one of the previous years okay to the extent written down let me take a quick example for that so I've just created like a small construct so I'm starting with a basic cost of let's say fifty dollars let's say in the first year the NRV is 52 so cost or NRV whichever is lower now here since it is the original cost you can't write it up beyond 50 there is no write up allowed and I'm going to write the balance sheet value as 50 itself I'm just assuming that the inventory remains unsold and in the next year the market value drops to 47 so my rule says cost or NRV whichever is lower the write down has to be done there is no choice so you have to write it down so the delta that you have created is of minus 3 you write it down to 47 now in the next year let's say this 47 becomes 45 so you have to further write it down by 2 so overall if you look at it the cumulative write down that you've done is of 5 so this is the maximum potential that you can write it up by there is another way that you can look at this 5 is the original cost uh, minus the final value appearing in the balance sheet so in the fourth year if let us say the value increases again back to 52 you want to write up IFRS says yes you can write it up but only to the extent written down in the previous year how much is the amount that you're asking it is plus 7 but the only thing that you can do is plus 5 so therefore 45 plus 5 50 is the amount that you can write it up so if I again like construct that graph from 50 you did not go to 52 you remained at 50 in the first year then came to 47 went again to 45 and then from 45 went back up to 50 itself you did not go to 52 in any of the years okay so these were the provisions of write-up in case of IFRS please keep in mind that US gap no write-up is allowed it's only the one-way traffic you can push it down but you cannot reverse your mistake as well okay so I hope this so so this is the example that you know we have taken so I hope that this session was useful pretty small but but very interesting session should you have any query please write to us at query at the rate finstudyclub.com we would be more than happy to help you looking forward to speak to you in my forthcoming session thank you very much